YouTube and FNAF. These two are basically synonymous now. YouTube helped FNAF grow, and FNAF caused a lot of YouTubers to become the website's icons. However, recently I noticed that some YouTubers seem to be gods at the game, and some, well, not so much. So in this video, I wanna look at FNAF YouTubers, analyze their gameplay, and generally, their skill in FNAF fan games, and then tell you about what I think their overall skill is, and put them on the tier list. Also, I won't have every YouTuber, obviously, and this video is meant for entertainment purposes. I'm not trying to shame anyone, and I'm not that great oh. either. So oh. please, like and subscribe, it will help support me a lot, and let's begin. Now, I think you know which one I'm gonna talk about first, and I need to have him first so that the comments don't complain. Markiplier. Now, to rank the skill of a YouTuber, I judge only games that they are playing for the first time, and ranking how long it takes them to understand mechanics, how well their overall performance is, and how well they adapt. If a YouTuber spends 30 years of their life doing the 50-20 mode, then it's gonna drive their score down. I honestly think that through all of his playthroughs, which is a great source of background noise or just funny videos for when I'm relaxing, I found that he is actually pretty good at most of the games. Sure, he has the beginner so mishaps, but I mean, everyone has those. These games are basically all about trial and error, and I genuinely think Mark here got the grasp of the games relatively quickly. I mean, he is called the King of Five Nights at Freddy's. In addition to that, he completed most of the max modes. Not 50-20, but honestly, I think that was just because it would have taken a lot of time, because during that time it was basically up to RNG. He even beat the plush baby level way quicker than other YouTubers, which I mean, I salute you for that, sir. Although he did die a lot in the FNAF 6 office sections, but I'm not gonna hold that against him too much, because I mean, the office sections in FNAF 6 are just painful. I'm gonna place Markiplier at a very respectable 8 tier. Sure, he struggled, but it seems like he got the grasp of each game very quickly. Up next is Queso. How can anyone not know him by now? He's such a big streamer. I mean, just look at his subscriber count. Now, uh, look, this video isn't meant to shame anyone. It's alright to be worse than others at the game. I mean, I was stuck on fucking Lego Batman, but Queso dies a lot, and sometimes he has to pull up guides. This dude analyzes the, the color of the static. Or gets advice from his Twitch chat when they decide to stop making fun of him. Also, I couldn't find the full VODs, I only found and watched parts of his official playlist, which don't show him beating a lot of the FNAF games. Although there are some games where it seems like he genuinely was able to make his own strategy and was able to beat a lot of the top challenges the games have to offer. So although Queso has had a lot of pickups, I put him in B tier, he's decent at the games. Next up, Daco. Now this one... Surprisingly, I couldn't get a lot of info on because I don't count the Revisited series. Uh, it's kind of hard to find full videos of him before something like FNAF 4, but from what I saw as his location 6 security breach, he's very good. He dies in the beginning, but in the later nights it seems like he really perfects his strategy in most games, most notably FNAF 6, which is a game where most people struggle with during every night. So overall, I would put Doko an S tier. I mean, hey, you just get a feel for these games once you've played thousands of FNAF fan games like Daco did. Daco just seems to catch onto the mechanics really quickly, so I think he deserves this spot. He did have trouble with that night. Night 4 and Sister Location, but come on, it's Sister Location Night 4. Next up, Critical. Now, there's a not a lot of data to analyze for Critical here. I mean, it's not like I'm exactly an NBA a uh, show thing guy uh, that has all the data, but I really wanted to include him. Even though he didn't beat a lot of the games, he did speedrun security breach, but no one count for this. He posted videos of him playing the first nights of FNAF 1 and 4. He didn't just beat them, but he did provide some, well, questionable commentary. I piss all over her. Right in her mouth, in her face. There And there was no mistaking, it was piss. Yeah, he graces us with his stories, just like he graced us with his amazing performance in Game of Thrones. Overall, Critical will just, well, I think he tried to get some funny content rather than actually beat the game. Which is fair, these videos are hilarious. So overall, even though there's not a lot of data for me to analyze here, which is a word I'm using very loosely, my fat ass is just watching YouTube videos, I'm sitting in front of the computer like a 30,000 karma redditor, I'm putting Critical in C. Now if you're into Wii Sports Raging videos, you're definitely gonna recognize the next one. Poof Asher. Uh, Poof Asher. Poof Asher. 
Uh, and well, we got our first F tier in our hands. I'm sorry. He wasn't able to beat Knight 2 in FNAF 1. Although he got farther in FNAF 2. Come on, it's FNAF 2. He beat some of the Knights in FNAF 3 and 4, which I'll give him credit for. But he did have his Twitch chat explain the mechanics to him, which probably made it easier. And he gave up on Sister Location Knight 4, which, I mean, real. But sorry, that FNAF 1 blunder really drags it down. Also, please don't sexually assault Freddy again. It's against the rules at Freddy Fazbear's. F tier. Next up is 11. So, listen. Okay, I get it, right? I'm Polish YouTuber. I am not biased just because he's Polish. I think he is legitimately really good at the games. And although he fails a lot in the early nights, eventually he gets a grasp of it and manages to beat the game, including the max modes. I think he beat all the max modes in every FNAF game, including the infamous 50-20 mode. Look, all the people who beat these max modes, especially before the ultimate strategies come out like the one in FNAF 1, are completely unhinged. Like when I lose 3 times, I wanna throw my PC out of my window, but these guys manage to endure it for hours. He dies a lot when the game throws new stuff at him, like Phantom Foxy or Nightmare Fred, where just stuff you wouldn't expect, but I mean, that's just normal. And Eleven manages to figure it out pretty quickly, so I give him a place in the S tier. Next up is the GOAT Cory Extension, aka the taxi driver from the FNAF movie. So this is another A tier, because well, while looking for his old Let's Plays, I found that he's surprisingly good. Like this was his first time playing games and he grasped them real quick. Only took him a few deaths to figure out most things, which let's say is pretty good considering most players just throw things at the wall hoping they stick. Which they mostly don't. Cory dies in the early oh, night, sure, but th this guy just doesn't seem to die once he figures his strategy out. It's like he went slash game mode creative. I thought about giving him S tier, but decided not to, because he rarely goes for the max modes in these games. It is close though. For someone casually playing for the knights in these games, he's really good and far better than many others. Next up, me. I haven't played many of the fan games on my channel, but from the ones and fan games I did play, I... It took me three hours, hours, to beat the Joy of Creation demo, a demo. Yeah, I'm hyped for the full game, but also terrified. And I didn't make it past the first sections of Pole Shift 2. I'm putting myself in F tier, and I'm gonna admit I'm not a good of FNAF. Except Security Breach, I'm not yet that, and let me know if you want a Security Breach speedrun stream. Next up is the man that always wishes top of the morning to ya, and has his own coffee named top of the morning to ya. Jack Spadicey. He's a little tough to rank because he didn't play for all of the knights in each game, but it seems like he's pretty average. I noticed he dies quite a bit and okay, this is where I'm gonna be honest. Most of the videos these guys do are edited, so we don't know how long or how short it took them to beat each knight, so this list is very inaccurate, but hey, it's just for fun. So I'm placing Jack Petixai in B. I wouldn't say he's bad at any of the games, he dies quite a bit, sure, a lot in the later nights too, but I mean, that's just normal, no shame there. So moving on from Jack Pepsi tie, Blasphemous HD. This guy is known for a certain clip of his FNAF 2 video. <laughs> she is such a bad bitch though! I will fuck the shit out of that robot, man. I'm not even- This guy is not good, I'm sorry. It took him multiple videos to beat Night 2 in FNAF 1, but, but man, he is entertaining. I love this guy. He's one of the funniest Let's Players I know. Same with the other games. He dies a lot, and I don't think he beat any of the games, or at least a lot of them. He just isn't that good. I'm gonna put him in F tier. If this was an entertainer tier list, you better believe I'd put this guy in S tier immediately, though. Now, for the final one. S++++. DJ Sturf is the ultimate FNAF player. He not only beat 5020 mode, he perfected it and shared his knowledge with us younglings. He knows everything about FNAF, pretty sure he could juggle the animatronics. I think he beat every max mode and yeah, made them even harder somehow. This guy is just the GOAT and none of us will ever be like him. So yeah, he's just at the top. Let me know what YouTubers I missed. Remember, this is just meant for fun, don't take it too seriously. I don't want to be the guy that's like, oh, this YouTuber sucks at this game. Because that really isn't the point of this video, but I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. This was Game Speaking, and goodbye.